just in Sydney, seeing some old friends and uh, just catching up, having a little, a little free time down here, <clears throat> which has been good. No, uh, I've been able to surf, but there's not a lot of surf right now. So it's just nice fall days down here, um, you know, just leading into the winter and the weather changes, the wind kind of goes a little more out of the west and offshore instead of like the warm onshores. And uh, yeah, it's just been nice. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you making time to catch up with us. Um, I thought I'd just try to grab you for a quick one. And um, obviously, as you know, we've, without our known, we've moved into a new depth of messaging around sustainability and um, something that was planned for a long time. We've been working towards it <clears throat> for about a year and a half. And um, it just so happens that, you know, it's all, we're putting it all out there right now during this, you know, quarantine time, um, which oddly seems fitting, right? I mean, this taking care of the planet and people should probably be what we're talking about, right? Yeah, hopefully that message carries over because the idea from our point of view is to <clears throat> to do better by people and do better by the environment and, and our building process, our supply chain and all that. So yeah, maybe it's a, maybe there's a, a cross message for us, you know, something, something better for us to dive deep into on, on this time for sure. hundred percent. Um, in the last two weeks, uh, we we launched that letter that you wrote, which I encourage everyone to go check out at Outer Known's new sustainability section online. Um, that letter was really reaffirming our uh, commitment to sustainability, which is really why you wanted to start the brand. And um, I thought we could talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, I remember that call in March, I, th I think it was March of 2013, uh, there was four of us on the phone and you let, it was your phone call. You called us and you asked us, you know, what are we wearing? Where is it coming from? And um, it was, was a pretty powerful moment. Um, <clears throat> it was about two and a half years before we'd even start selling clothing. So I, I'd love it if you could go a little deeper into your vision and, you know, the impetus for starting out or now. <clears throat> yeah. The idea around out or known, you know, on a surface level, the, the idea was that I've been getting paid, making a living from clothing companies my whole life. It's been the, uh, you know, the bulk of the, uh, the money I've made from surfing and allowed me to, you know, have a roof over my head and travel around the world and do all these things. But I didn't find that I knew a whole lot more than just kind of the marketing and branding and, and uh, <clears throat> ideas behind the brand. Uh, so... I wanted to have more ownership of that. And um, you know what I mean by that is just more, more innate knowledge about the whole process that makes um, an article of clothing, who makes your t-shirt, where the materials come from, um, you know, where, what is the supply chain, where are the factories, who are those people? And I, I would argue that to the average person, those, those stories, maybe um, either aren't interesting or, or, um, or don't concern them uh, in their daily lives. But I felt like it was something that was a, a bit more meaningful. And maybe once those stories are told and understood or, um, you know, better stories replace them, that those would be things that are interesting to people who, who are out shopping. <clears throat> There's an irony, there's a certain irony with our brand, and obviously, because it's, it's uh, more expensive than the average clothing brand in the surf world, in our endemic world. Um, the, 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 the twist to that is that people don't understand all the layers that go into it behind the scenes and that, <clears throat> um, you know, how the, how the margins work and all that kind of thing is a, is a different story. Um, but the, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, our, our product it takes a lot more energy, uh, from, from our group to make, and it goes through a process that has fair labor association certification. Um, we are using 
product that is more environmentally friendly, recycled, regenerated, or organic. Um, <clears throat> these are the pillars of the brand. And without those things uh, in place, yeah, we can make a, a product that is much cheaper and uh, more accessible to absolutely everyone. Um, and we are trying to get there, but until the whole of the industries and clothing go go that route, it's going to be hard to bring all those prices down, you know. So we're just starting where we can, and uh, we have personal relationships, as you know, John. You can speak more to that relationships yeah. with the with our supply chain, with our factories that build it around the world, <clears throat> and only through those personal relationships, and in many cases, have we been able to even get our foot in the door to have pieces of clothing made in these factories that would rather have 10,000 or 20 or 50,000 uh, 50, orders yeah. as opposed to 500 or a thousand. Yeah. Well, I think, I think the good news too is we've obviously learned a lot. And so we're trying to now focus more on some of the things that we know really works and we know we can build to the standards that we set out to hit. So I think in many ways, we, we've, we've done what you set out to do, which is just understand the process more, understand the fibers that are going into things. Um, and maybe that's a little bit of like, you know, from that first call, when you sort of set, set the vision for the brand, um, we've had a lot of learnings. Um, how are you feeling? I mean, over, these, over this time, what have been some of the biggest challenges for you but then also maybe some of the biggest wins like where did you feel like wow i like this i'm like this was great we we solved this problem i now have more understanding into this one piece of the puzzle that i was always curious about mm. i mean there's a few stories within that um just from a a thirty thousand foot elevation looking at our industry <clears throat> our surf industry so many of the companies are struggling and there's been a there's been a a heavy i would say change in direction for a lot of the brands over the years because brands were originally started because guys wanted to pay for their surf trips and make trunks that they liked or put a print on a t-shirt that they enjoyed <clears throat> and so the ideas were what created the brands and that's what made the brand so cool because there were individuals and little pockets of people around the world, whether it's Australia or France or USA in these surf worlds that were creating these brands that spoke to people because it, it captured the, the spirit, you know, of, of surfing and traveling and, and being on the beach and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and I would argue that eventually almost every one of those brands ended up in a, a financial quagmire um, around ownership and stock price and stuff like that. And so, uh, you know, the evolution of the brands became something that was more about the financial side than it was about the spirit of surfing. And, <clears throat> and so I, I just feel like a lot of troubles came because people got so far departed from the original concept. And, um, and you know, when things get bigger than what you know how to handle, it, maybe it's better if someone else handles it. I don't know. I know there's things, look, there's things that I'm good at and there's things I suck at. And uh, I know there's a lot of things that are brand that I'm not good at. And that's why I don't do that job because I, I wouldn't do it very well and we probably wouldn't be in business anymore. So <clears throat> it's about creating a good team and keeping that original concept and that idea of what you're going for. And with, with us, you know, without a known, we, we aren't going out and saying, Hey, we're the most hardcore surf brand. Um, we're going to bring you surf every day. You know, our mission is to something a little bigger and I hope it speaks to the larger audience of uh, people in the world of, of clothing. If, if, and dare I even say fashion, but that's a whole different uh, layer. Um, <clears throat> but just the idea to, to find out, uh, find ways to produce in a more friendly environment and take care of people better, um, pay better wages, use better materials, all those sort of things. So that's, you know, for me, that's the, those are the impetus. That, that, that's the impetus to start this brand and, and where to get your uh, inspiration from in the design. You know, obviously, 
then you get into design and branding and marketing and fit and all those sort of things. But, yeah. you know, the idea for us starting um, and, and, you know, even saying this to you sounds funny because we, we're talking to the broader audience right now. I'm not speaking to you, John, I'm speaking yeah. to you people. And, you know, of course, you know, a lot, you know, most of this stuff better than I do at this point for sure. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, the idea for us is to, to, to be able to, set our little example. Um, you know, the most important thing for us is that you like our clothing and we make a good product that you, you're happy with. You like our customer service, all that kind of thing. But at, uh, at the end of the day, if there's a story that goes with it and some, some deeper meaning and that shirt or that pant or whatever becomes more dear to you because of it and it inspires you or your kid or somebody you know to go, hey, I like that. I want to be involved in that company one day or I want to be involved in something that does, you know, that makes that material or, you know, there's a, I see a way because of what I learned uh, getting my education in college that we could better implement uh, something in the supply chain. You know, we've, we've heard a lot of these stories. That's why I bring them up. We've had a lot of people um, write us messages or tell, tell us in person that <clears throat> it inspired their kid to go to school and study that thing now, just in the past couple of years. Um, or, you know, I saw you, I saw your brand. I wanted to come work in your office. We've had that happen a few times. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, on, on that note, you talked a little bit about some brands that had lost their way over the years. Um, I would argue that we're doing exactly what you set out for the brand to do. Um, we, we, we've gone after sustainability. Um, we're about to celebrate our fifth anniversary. We figured out how to be more efficient in our manufacturing process and how to use our materials mm -hmm. better and so our prices are better. So how are you feeling going into this five year anniversary of your vision? I'm feeling good. You know, five years ago we launched in July. Uh, it was a very exciting day for me. I felt like it was a, a an accumulation of, of so many things, so many years in my, in my career of surfing to finally get to that point. And then we launched and, and we suffered a lot. We suffered a lot for, uh, for a while. I would say the first year was tough, you know, um, because we, we're coming in, we come into market with, with fast fashion and what prices people are, are um, used to, accustomed to and, and willing to pay is, is different. And, um, uh, you know, although in say a fashion store, we were probably the, the I would say that's cheapest, most affordable brand um, in the surf market. We were the most expensive brand. And so, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people felt, uh, and I felt the full brunt of that. A lot of people felt like they were left behind in that story or something. Yeah. So it's, it's been a very important, I would say the past four years or five years since launch, been very important to try and bring that down and, and, and make the story make sense to people. Um, so they understand the, the purpose of the brand. But like you said, sustainability is why we are in business. It's, it's, our, it's at the forefront of why we are doing this. And it's what we're totally dedicated to and we will always be dedicated to. We want to help change certain processes in the clothing world. And um, so there's constantly that higher goal. And we want people to be happy and be able to, to buy the clothing and wear it and all that kind of stuff but we want it to last a long time, you know? So um, we're really determined to, to get the, the quality, right? Quality control and, and everything that people buy. You know, one of the greatest stories I heard you tell me early on in the brand was somebody who was kind of more or less being a hater said they bought like 10 or 15 things and they intended to keep one or two and return it all. And they kept it all because they loved it. They and I thought all, that that was great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, because we had such a great quality of product and people loved it. And that, I think that spoke volumes to me. And that was, I think at that moment, I started to feel like we're going to win this battle. It's an uphill battle. It's, it's um, uh, you know, maybe not everything's exactly like we want it to be or everyone wants it to be. But, you know, we'll find our, we'll find our little lane and we'll, we'll start drafting. I mean, that's really well put. Like beyond the, beyond the people that were yelling at us, for the pricing, we had a lot of our industry friends, peers, people you had worked with for years and years telling you you're this, this was impossible. It, it would never work. Yeah, absolutely. My old boss, Pierre Agnes, uh, rest his soul, miss you, Pierre. But, um, you know, Pierre was the first person to fold, 
flat out telling me straight to my face, you can't do this. It's not going to work. It will never work. He told me. And I was like, thanks for the vote of confidence there, Pierre. But it was, um, you know, that's somebody who spent his life in, in this market. And he didn't believe that there was that, um, that, that zone to be able to do this, that lane to be able to create this. And wow. that competitive spirit, obviously, obviously that brings up my competitive spirit, but not in a, in a way to, to, uh, to necessarily win, but to understand and see if th this can be made to, to work. Yeah. I don't know if you remember, there was that dinner in New York with Mickey Drexler and <coughs> he, he said, I believe I'm quoting when he said, you know, no one cares about sustainability. It'll never work. Love, yeah. love your vision, but you know, just, just go down, just go down a conventional path. So that's the one. Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> you know, and if, and if, and if I was going to go down a conventional path, I'd still be under contract with somebody and yeah. that's just the way it would be, you know, and it, I would make my life a lot easier and I'd, um, you know, and making a lot more money than you're making with us. I'd, yeah. I, I'd make a lot more money. I, I wouldn't have to think uh, about any of the processes and, and, you know, have any distractions. It's, it would just be 100% still always focused on, how am I going to surf the best I can today? You know, but at some point you become a zombie doing that. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. I love it. <laughs> but yeah, hearing, having conversations with, with guys like that throughout the years has definitely raised the bar uh, for the challenge, you know, to get over. So we've just published our 2030 sustainability oh, strategy and our commitment to coming completely circular, um, which means designing out all waste and pollution and making sure that we're using materials that already exist. Um, that's a big deal and it's something that has been a long time in the process. I think a lot of people thought we were launching it because of this moment in time. Um, and it was like, we felt it was the right thing to say. It's, it's, it's been about a year and a half in the works. And so um, I guess I'm a little curious, like, you know, that's 10 years out. We're looking 10 years out. Um, we're saying we want to lead innovation. We want to embrace circular models and we want to expand our reach with fair labor beyond just the, the tier one manufacturers, but we want to go deep into the, the mills and the trim makers and the dye houses. Um, so how, how are you feeling? I mean, that's a, that's a huge deal, you know, like, and a lot, yeah. a lot of people could argue it's, it's, it's such a lofty goal. It, it, it might not even be achievable, but like, how are you feeling now? Can you elaborate a little bit on all of that and, and, and your feeling about where the brand's headed now? Yeah, well, sir, uh, I'd be I'd be just here questioning you and looking for answers myself when it comes to circularity because that's a whole different can of worms um, than than just like the word sustainability. Yeah. <clears throat> now you're figuring out how do you close that loop and how do you get back around and, and um, keep that clothing out of landfills and back in the system in a way that makes sense and you can make another good product from it. Um, so it's it's a it's speaking a little bit of a foreign language to me because I'm not so well versed. I'm just starting to catch up myself. But you know that's the thing I'm proud of. Without a known is that we have we have a group of people who are so dedicated and committed to that message that they're going to take it well beyond anything I know. You know, I just I just kind of came in with the 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 big brush and said this is what I want to do. And there's a whole lot of cracks and corners that I don't know how to get into, or maybe I don't even see or know anything about. So. You know, well, our team, our team there is, is, yeah, is setting a lofty goal, as you say. I mean, it makes me a little nervous to hear it. <laughs> well, so. I think, you know, constant evolution is what this is all about. And, you know, um, I give a lot of credit to Megan Stoneburner, who has led the charge on our 2030 vision. Um, and obviously from the top down, Mark is our CEO is fully committed to this, um, obviously the board. You know, I think what, what it makes me, where, where I go in my head is like five years ago, it was hard to imagine that we would be, 
using organic cotton across the collection as much as we are. And today, you know, 90% of all of our fibers are organic, recycled, or regenerated. So if we it's even higher, it's even higher in the women, isn't it? It's 90% it in the men. Yeah. yeah. We launched 100% women's, but you know, yeah. I think just overall in the brown, we're we're at 90%. Our goal is 100%. But I, I would say you and I probably didn't think that was achievable five years ago. So that's why, as I sit here and I think about moving towards complete circularity, um, it's a huge goal. But I, you know, it's just going to take all of these passionate people um, pushing forward. You know, we're going to look. We're we're not always going to be perfect, right? I mean, that's the one thing we've really learned is we're going to make mistakes along the way. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you really like this. This was great. I think, you know, when you wrote that amazing letter and sent it to us a few weeks ago, um, you know, I think we all realized that sustainability had been so close to us that we probably weren't talking about it enough. Um, so, you know, I just want to restate that everyone should go to outerknown.com and check out your letter. Um, also look at the sustainability site that has not only, um, our vision and the 2030 roadmap, but it also has all of the benchmark accomplishments, um, we've mm. achieved along the way. So, um, you know, I think all of, all of these things um feel pretty good to be able to like take inventory um and share share these stories with everybody um is there any other thoughts you know i have one i have one easy question for you just about your favorite products in a minute but is there any anything else that you you've got on your mind about uh the brand or where we're headed um i think I have found that because of, because we've been vocal about it, the sustainable sustainability message has been more interesting to people. And I think it's something that people inherently care about. And in a time like this um, with the COVID-19 and everyone having time to think and all that kind of thing, I, all the messages going around that the earth is cleaner, the air is cleaner, the water's cleaner. There's more animals sort of like within range of us um, accessible to, you know, walking around town or, you know, places that they didn't normally show up because there's too many people on the beach or whatever. Um, uh, I, I think the sustainability message is something that now resonates with a lot more people. I don't mean just now that it, that's necessarily what created it, but this made them aware that it is a message that is, is important. Um, and it's important beyond marketing. It's important beyond somebody, you know, printing something to try and sell something. So, <clears throat> you know, that's where we need to, be careful to just let people know what we're doing, not be preachy, lead by example, um, share the things that we've learned so that somebody else could use them like an open source for what they're doing too. And that might extend into other areas, like not just clothing, but that might be food, that might be cars or bikes or computers or who knows. Um, but if more people have this in mind when making something, it's not that you can or can't do it. It's just the how and yeah. trying to figure it out. So <clears throat> having the, the, the thing about starting a clothing company, so many people are like, why are you doing that? There's no money in that. A, I'm like, that's not really what it's about. It's this is about giving back to, and learning about the thing that has given me a life and a career and, uh, and, and hopefully making it a better, place because of that and so it really hit me in the gut to go and put my time and energy into this and um it's something that makes me really proud it also makes me really nervous sometimes because it's it's just tough like people said like pierre told me like mickey said to you and us uh, at that at that dinner um that it's it, this is not an easy way to go. Some people just think it's not possible. Nobody cares and it's, it's not important or whatever. But I think at this point in the history of mankind, these things are important in every aspect of business and work and pleasure. And, and uh, I hope that they start to become something that resonates more with people and become more present in everyone's daily lives. 
um, just the conversations, you know, because then you can start to work it out. Well, I mean, it's certainly much more rewarding working towards the goals that we have. So I'm willing to stick it out for the long run with you and really appreciate everything that your vision and your perseverance through all of this. Um, so to end this, um, you know, an easy question for you. I, I think I might have this wrong, but I'm pretty sure your favorite piece in those early days was that um, low tide hoodie, the Terry Talling hoodie. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm wrong, but we've come a long way since then. So I'm just curious, what uh, what is your favorite? No, you're right. That That's a good guess because funny enough, I'm wearing the Terry okay. Tell uh, shorts right now. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, look, I mean, my that's kind of my essential travel yeah. piece to this day. I still wear some sort of one of our hoodies. It's a Terry, Terry cloth, Terry towel cloth. Um, to me, it just is, it's perfect. Yeah. It's not too warm, but I don't get cold in it. And I put the hoodie around and, you know, now I'm going to figure out how to build a mask into the thing <laughs> and I'll, it'll be the perfect travel partner. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Well, I think that's a right. great. And, and, the, and the trunks, you know, our, our, our apex trunks still evolving in colors and styles and stuff, but it's, it's just, to me, it's a perfect surf trunk. I, I sometimes realize like I, I don't even ever notice them when I have them on. Yeah. And I think that's a good thing. You just don't want to notice them. You just want them to cover you up and not get in the way. Yeah. And work. Um, well, thanks, man. Oh, and I give a lot of blanket shirts away, by the way. Like anytime I have one I've used for a while and a friend's like, Oh, I like that. I just hand it to a friend. So oh, amazing. Those have, those have been really, really great. I think just, just cause you're wearing them today. So the original hoodie, Ter Terry hoodie you loved was called the low tide. Um, yep. um, it was actually one of the only materials at the time that we were doing that wasn't sustainable, but we did it because we loved the material. Um, what the shorts you're wearing is the newest, incarnation of that series we now call it the high tide and we've been able to over over the last few years figure out how to build them sustainably so that's now um predominantly recycled um materials so it's that's it's cool. cool yeah i mean it's cool that it's still your favorite but it's a great example of some of the evolution that outer has gone through over the years yeah i like the name evolution evolution too yeah <laughs> Well, dude, thanks. Really appreciate it. Um, uh, I, ironically, you and I have sort of always communicated virtually like this, so it's not so so different um, under quarantine. But it's great to see you, and I appreciate yeah. hearing, hearing all. You know, it's great hearing the story of Outer Known through your through you. So, yeah, thanks, John. Thanks for the time, and um, get a light, man. It looks dark in that house. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, hostage protest. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. We're trying to channel the original Earth Day vibe of 1970 right now. Oh, you need candles. Only candles. All right. Nice. Thanks, guys. All right. Yeah, man. Happy Earth, happy Earth Day. Hope you guys are, are doing good back there. All right, man. Bye-bye. All right. See you guys.